This is the Voice Coach Podcast for all the tips and tricks on getting the most out of your speaking voice. I'm Nick Redman and I'll be sharing everything you need to know to keep your voice healthy, sounding great and working the way it should. If you're an actor, voiceover, speaker, presenter or podcaster, you're in the right place. Hopefully it'll be a wee bit of crack too. Let's get started. Hello listener, welcome back. I'm getting my geek glasses on for today, so strap in. Just a little bit of necessary, interesting also theory about uh, sounds and stuff, uh, because we're moving from the basics of articulation and the release and the toning and all that to moving on to text and things and how we can work with the sounds that are in words and all that sort of stuff. So this is a bit of theory. I feel like I need to do this episode because, for example, a few episodes ago I mentioned the term plosive and I suddenly thought, oh, have I even explained those yet? I think I may have referenced them in an earlier episode, but I thought I would just recap and get a little bit of theory out there that'll be useful as we move into text. So, here we go. It's a little terminology interlude. I feel like I need jingles. Terminology. (laughs) <laughs> if you're a jingle maker, please do get in touch. All right. Now, there's loads of ways of making the sounds that we recognise in speech. Our articulators, the lips, teeth, tongue, hard palate, soft palate, alveolar ridge, uh, come together in loads of different ways to sort of either obstruct or shape the air, which is why sounds, well, sound different because <laughs> they're made in different ways. On a really, really broad spectrum... We can put these into two categories of vowels and consonants. They're the bits that are important to us and recognisable to us as uh, normal humans going about our lives, vowels and consonants. But just in case, I'm going to run through a few more extra details of each one. So, vowels, it's so good in a Northern Irish accent, (laughs) if you don't understand me. Vowels. (laughs) Vowels are made by shaping the air as it flows through the vocal tract. Vocal tract is the area from the larynx to the mouth and nose. So the air flows through the vocal tract and it's shaped by the tongue and the lips. There's this amazing website actually called Seeing Speech, which I highly recommend if you want to literally see the tongue shaping in action. Uh, It's loads of MRI scans of sounds and I'll link to it in the show notes. But basically the tongue flails around in the mouth space. It's up high, it's down low, it's forwards, it's back, it bunches, it releases, it does all sorts of things to shape the vowel sounds that we recognise. Now, vowel sounds are unobstructed. That's one of the important things to think about when we're comparing them to consonants. In vowel land, there are basically five written vowels that we recognise from a page from writing, A, E, A, O, U. But in spoken English... Those five unobstructed vowel sounds combine to make way more sound units or phonemes as they are known uh, in the uh, in the industry. Basically, a phoneme is a sound unit that means something to us as listeners in terms of comprehension. But there's loads of them. These five vowels make loads of different sounds, which is why learning English is so fucking hard. <laughs> we won't go into that here. I'll leave the linguistics chat for other amazing podcasts like, uh, well, Lingthusiasm is a good one. But that's why English learning is very hard, because there's loads of sounds that are spelt the same, but said different. Yay. <laughs> and as an extra little useful bit in the vowel land, you can have long vowels and short vowels. I mean, we're not talking minutes of difference here. We're talking millisquilly seconds, but there are differences in lengths. Short vowels in spoken English can be oh, really cleverly remembered with this little sentence. So, that leather is not much good. A, E, A, E, A, A, A. So, that sentence represents the short vowels in the words like trap. A, dress, a, kit, a, lot, a, strut, a, and foot, a. That leather is not much good. How cool is that? I love a little uh, phrase. Is it mnemonic? Is that the word to describe when you have a phrase that helps you remember something? I think it might be. Okay, I'll put that on my list to check later. (laughs) So that leather is not much good. Short vowels. Long vowels then. 
Heat soon forms firm arms. E U O U A. And that little phrase represents the sounds from fleece, e, goose, u, thought, o, nurse, a, and palm, a. So heat soon forms firm arms, long vowels. That leather is not much good. Short vowels. It's cool, isn't it? Anyway, vowels can also be sliding, i.e. they start in one place or one sound and then move to another. And these are known as diphthongs and you even get triphthongs. But I don't think we need to know about triphthongs right now. Diphthongs are the ones that slide around from one place to the next. For example, face, e, price, I, choice, oi, mouth, I, goat, o, near, ear, cure, er. Now, disclaimer, different accents have different sound inventories. So your diphthongs probably sound different. You may not have all of the sounds in these phrases or in this list of words, but this isn't an accent episode. So I'm not going to go into it in too much detail here. Point is, we have short vowels, we have long vowels, and we have slidey widey vowels. So vowels are unobstructed, can be long, short, or sliding. Great. Now that information will become useful over the next few episodes. What it is, we're going to start looking at how to be more expressive with text and communication and understanding the makeup of the words is so crucial to giving yourself things to play with when it comes to finding variety in the voice. And if you're someone who's been told sort of unusefully and unhelpfully that you sound monotone, nobody's monotone, but we're not going to go into that, then this sort of stuff can be really useful. Okay, that's vowels. Next up. Consonants. Now, on the other hand, they are the opposite of unobstructed. (laughs) They are obstructed. They are basically, by definition, sounds made by obstructing the airflow as it comes through the vocal tract in some way, obstructing it with the articulators. So basically putting your articulators in the way of the airflow. Now, there are loads of ways this can happen, but it's nice to sort of organise them a wee bit. So let's use the way they categorise them in the Verbal Arts Workbook by David and Rebecca Carey, which is under three headings of stops, nasals and continuance. So many new words. So if we go back to plosives, which is why I felt the need to do this episode in the first place, (laughs) Uh, plosives fall under the stop heading. Basically what that means is They're sounds made by stopping the airflow completely and then releasing it. To make a plosive, the airflow coming from the lungs and through the vocal folds has to be completely fully stopped in the vocal tract in some way, like it literally can't get any further for a teeny weeny millisecond. And then the sound itself that we recognise is produced when that airflow is subsequently released. So you get the stop phase and then you get the release phase and that's what makes the sound that we recognise. For example as in television. If you go to make a tea, you'll feel the air stop, you'll get the tongue tip on the alveolar ridge, that bumpy bit above the teeth. That's not the tea being made, that's preparation for the tea being made. And the tea that we hear, that we recognise, is only made when that sound is released or exploded, aka plosive, out. Other plosives would be duh, duh, again, feel that tongue tip on the alveolar ridge, feel the stop and then the release, duh, duh, or k and g, k, g, k, g. Plosives. And the word plosive, of course, refers to the explosive nature of the release after the stop and, unsurprisingly, has its roots in Latin. Plosives come up a load in speaking, especially if you're working on a microphone, either live or pre-recorded. They make that really annoying popping sound on the microphone sometimes. People are always talking about how they can remove their plosives or what to do to reduce plosives. And it's because when that airflow that stopped is released a little bit too energetically, the sound kind of just explodes into the mic, distorting the sound. And we get that, p- I'm trying to demonstrate one now. Oh, I think I managed it. <laughs> The editor's going to be like, ow, my ears. 
Anyway, I'll do an episode soon on how to reduce plosives for you if you are listening as a microphone user. Now, the other common-ish term that pops up when we talk about consonants is fricative. Now, they're different to plosives because they obstruct the airflow in a different way. So instead of there being a total stop of the airflow, they only partially obstruct the airflow, creating friction. And that's what makes a sound. So the nature of fricatives is that they could basically just keep going as long as the airflow keeps going because there's no need to stop the air to create the sounds. It's the friction of two articulators coming together quite close that makes the sound that we recognise. And because they can just keep going and keep going and keep going, they fall under the heading continuant, which is different to stop. So they can basically continue or keep going. For example, as in fish, so the teeth and the bottom lip come together, as in shush, (laughs) shoo, there's a word with that sound in it, jeepers oh, other sounds like v, z, v, and th. There's loads of them. So there's a little more to fricatives because they can also be either voiced or voiceless, meaning that sometimes the vocal folds need to vibrate to make the phoneme happen, and sometimes they don't. E.g. f and v. So if we take f, what we feel is the teeth and the lower lip. If you pop your hand on the front of your throat, you won't feel any vocal fold vibration because it's not needed to make the sound that we recognise. If we add vocal fold vibration to a and we don't change the obstruction of the airflow, as in we keep the teeth and the lip in contact and we just make our vocal folds vibrate, we get a v as in vegetable. They're a voiced and unvoiced pair. So the sound doesn't have any vibration but when we add the vocal full vibration it becomes a v. It's fascinating isn't it? Oh well I think it is. You might have switched off by now. (laughs) But please bear with me because all of this stuff is really necessary and useful because like I said in the next few episodes we're going to be moving into working with text and it's really useful to have a little insight into the sounds that make up the words so we can use it to our advantage, exploit it and make everything sound lovely and expressive and engaging. Okay so there we go. Oh, I love a little technical interlude. Um, I suppose if I had to recap the most important points, I'd say vowels can be long, short or sliding. So remember that. And consonants have lots of different forms, but bank the terms and the concepts of plosive, the exploding ones with the stop and release phase, and fricative, the ones made with friction that can keep going as long as you have air for what's coming in the future. Right, bye for now. Oh, <laughs> look, that was a sliding vowel. Now, I... Hi. Oh, they're everywhere. See you next time. Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. To get the most out of your voice, come on over to our free community on Facebook, The Voice and Accent Hub. See you in there.